Our health editor, Dr Hillary, joins us now. It certainly sounds extraordinary, Hills. It is. I mean, for the first time, we've created an artificial embryo using stem cells rather than an egg and a sperm. And that's a, that's a first. So where does that lead us? I mean, well done to those scientists, and they're British, so that's something to celebrate. But where does that leave us in terms of what we can do with that? There'll be couples struggling to have children and think, is this a solution? There'll, there'll be lots of people wondering if this is going to help them. Well, these embryos haven't been created in order to create life. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to grow it. They're not capable of growing into uh, adult um, mice or humans Could at this they stage. Be, though, but Hills? what it does do is it gives scientists an opportunity to create a batch of these oh. artificial embryos, which can then be looked at in the very early stages of life, the first few two weeks, if you like, of life. And that will enable us to look at why things go wrong for couples who have, say, regular miscarriage or who have developmental problems in the babies uh, that, that are born to them. And the heartbreak that that entails could become in the future something of the past if this research goes ahead. So in the future, really good ways of doing research on preventing those, those problems that many couples see when they're suffering from subfertile problems. There will be people who are concerned about it, though, uh, Hilary, and, and potential for cloning or for designer babies as well. Yeah, there's always going to be people who worry about this kind of reproductive research. However, the moral status of the embryo, yes, is the same as the moral status of any other embryo created any other way. But we're not creating life here. We're just looking at a model at very early stages of development in an embryo that wouldn't have the viability to become a, an adult.